Hey, what's up? David Wood FX here, and welcome to another exciting GIMP tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be taking a look at creating lens flares, as uh, somebody recently requested. They asked that I uh, show them how I made the flare, which goes with um, a previous tutorial. My flaming text tutorial, there was a preview image that looked like this, and they were wondering how I made the awesome flare in the background behind the text. So. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Obviously there are multiple ways of doing this. Um, some people have different ways of doing it. Uh, you can use brushes. There are many lens flare brushes or stock images out there that you can find on uh, like DeviantArt or on Brush Easy. There's even an app for your iPhone or iPod that you know you can create different effects with. And um, both of those are kind of cool, but I think that's the cheap and lazy way out. Although this, I will say, this does look a, like a really, really cool app. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. First, let's look at the basic lens flare. Here I have an image with a black background. And we'll go to Filters, Light and Shadow, Lens Flare. And this is the basic GIMP lens flare. As you can see, it's just this ugly red color with a bunch of smaller circles and various shades and uh, halos and stuff. And uh, this is the same flare that is in both Photoshop and After Effects. Although both of those have uh, three types of flares, while GIMP only has the one. If you use this particular flare in your image, most likely you will get laughed at, because people are familiar with it from those programs. Um, and they they know that it's a very basic flare. Um, actually, just recently, they used the uh, same flare in a promo image for the season six of Doctor Who, and uh, you can see the basic halo here with the flares going off to the side. But they did do something nice, and they added a horizontal flare here that kind of streaks off in opposite directions, kind of like a anamorphic lens. And uh, we will be doing something similar to that. So let's pull up a couple uh, example images. Here's this one going to that. There's this one going to that. Uh, this one. I have to warn you, if you guys look too far south of the border, then you will get a laser to the face. Here's uh, this one. This is probably the most realistic one that I've created. And uh, we don't want to go J.J. Abrams and get something like this. I'm just telling you right now, avoid this if possible, because it will not help anything. So, let's go ahead and get started. We are going to create a new image, uh, the width 2000 pixels wide and the height 500 pixels. And we want to fill this with black. So the first thing we want to do is find the center of our image. And uh, that's what these little rulers are on the sides. Uh, if you drag, if you click on the inside of one of them and pull out, you can find a uh, guideline and uh, you can use these to place them and your brushes will uh, snap to them and uh, they're very useful if you've never looked into using guides I suggest it because they're definitely helpful um, so we want to place these exactly in the center of our image so a thousand place that on the thousandth pixel and place this one on the 250th pixel like that so now we know where the center of our image is uh, we're going to we'll create a new transparent layer, and we want to uh, choose the color white and grab our paintbrush tool, and uh, we're just going to use the basic GIMP circle brush, the hard edged brush, put it in the center. Now, uh, obviously, this is too small, so uh, we can use our bracket keys and scale those up, and we'll make something probably about there click and we'll make a new layer transparent again uh, we can just uh, scale the brush back down to probably about half the size of the other one and we're just going to go from the sides here so say about actually I might make that a little smaller um, from about here uh, just single click then hold down shift and you can draw a straight line and go across to about here there we go and uh, then we can 
we, we kind of already can see the basic uh, idea behind this. Uh, we'll hide the guides by going to view and turning them off. And uh, we will take the uh, first circle and we will go to blur, Gaussian blur. And it's pretty easy to find it. It's in the center of the image. And we want to give it a blur of, uh, let's see, probably about 95 looks good for this. We want to have a very soft circle, but we want to have the center just opaque enough that it can serve as a hot spot. Uh, so make, su make sure the chains are checked. Chains are checked. Uh, next to the blur radius so that the values stay the same. Hit OK. And we can see we blurred that. We'll go to the uh, other longer streak layer and go to filter, reshow Gaussian blur and uh, uncheck the chain this time and increase the horizontal blur to something huge say like 500 and the vertical blur we can lower that down to maybe 20 um, as you can see this will blur it out to the left and the right like crazy which will definitely help we may even go uh, further than that this comes down to personal preference exactly how much blur and how long of a streak we want uh, so I'm going to do 700 by 20 and hit OK. And you can see there's already a, a cool flare beginning to develop. Uh, we can duplicate the first circle layer again and give it a Gaussian blur. And we're going to do the same thing as we did with the uh, streak. We're going to lower the vertical blur to zero. And the horizontal, we can give that to something like uh, 200 or maybe lower. We'll try, let's see, 100. Eh, it's a little low. 150. There we go. And that will just blur it out into uh, more of an oval shape. We may even go further than that. This part is uh, very experimental. Uh, lots of trial and error to decide what kind of flare you like best. That looks pretty good. I like that a lot. Uh, we can take the main flare out here, duplicate that, bring up Gaussian Blur, um, increase the horizontal and the vertical radius, uh, something probably about, let's try 200, hit OK. So we have a nice overall glow on the outside edge here. And we can merge these layers together. And so far this is taking shape and looking pretty cool. Uh, we can go ahead and duplicate this layer again and uh, select our scale tool and we're just going to scale it uh, we're just going to scale the height of the image to about half of what we've got here and hit scale and then we can grab our align tool and just place that back in the center and that will give us a a uh, nice streak in the center there with a sharper edge. Definitely cool. Merge that together. Uh, next we need to merge the layer with the background. Uh, and then from here we can go ahead and color it. You can use whatever method you want to color it. Um, color balance, colorize, levels, curves, whatever one uh, works best for you. Most people are familiar with color balance, so that's what I'm going to show you. Now unfortunately, um, GIMP 2.8, the color balance tool does not work the same as 2.6, which is a shame. Um, this one is a lot more difficult to control, I think, and you have to use all three ranges, uh, shadows, midtones, and highlights to create a nice result, instead of only having to deal with the midtones as 2.6. So uh, let's go ahead and see what we can do. We want to make this a nice orange color like my original example. So we'll go under the shadows and we will bump up the red and bump up the yellow. We'll go into the highlights and we'll do the same. We'll just use the same settings for all of these for the moment just to see where we are at. And that looks kind of cool. Um, there's a dark line here w of red that I don't really like on the very outer edge, which uh, we may have to uh, lower the red or maybe bump up one of these other colors here. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Let's look at the highlight of the image, or the uh, 
very hot spot of the flare. We can increase the yellow on that so that it is a very, very hot center. Uh, Midtones, we can try bumping each of those up a little bit. Uh, seeing what works best for us. Um, so my settings for a nice orange flare for this are going to be in the shadows it's 40, 10, negative 15. Midtones is 30, 0, negative 35. Highlights is 20, 0, negative 40. And uh, we want to make sure preserve luminosity is on. It should be on for you guys because otherwise the uh, shadows will do funny things to the background if that's not checked. So make sure that it is checked. Hit OK. That looks pretty cool. Um, the colors are a little dull, so we can go into Hue and Saturation, grab the Saturation slider, and bump that up a little bit, just like that. Now, there is a little bit of a color blending issue going on because of the Color Balance tool. It's harder to blend the colors from the shadows, midtones, and highlights together. Uh, so we'll go into Filters, Reshow Gaussian Blur, and we just want to give this a little blur of like 15 or 20, depending on the size of our flare. That should be good. That is looking really cool. Um, I like it that so far. One other thing that we might do, uh, I made the flare a little bit small, which is okay. Uh, we'll fix that. We can just grab our scale tool and just scale it up. And the cool thing with the lens flare is because it is blurry, scaling it up, you're not going to lose any kind of quality with it. It will stay uh, pretty accurate, and then we can just make that layer the same size as the comp. That looks really, really cool so far. Uh, we can even bring up, say, our curves. So I just bumped up the reds down by, or down between the midtones and the highlights a little bit, and then the blue channel uh, by the highlights, I just brought more of the yellow out like that. That looks cool. And you can still see the white highlight in the center there. Now that our flare is done, we can place it into our scene. So here is just uh, one of the example images of this cool headlight with a very nice orange, uh, amber colored headlight, which this flare would look great with. So we'll just drag and drop this into the comp. And obviously it's much larger than the preview image. So we can go ahead and scale that down so that it fits. And set the blend mode on screen so we can see where it is and place that in the center like that. Uh, we can place some guides to show where the center of the flare is in the headlights, so right about there. And we are going to add a little bit more to this flare to make it really pop. So make a new black layer. Find out where the center of these guides are. Let's see, it's about 488, 123. 488, 123. Go to Filters, Light and Shadow, Supernova. Supernova is a really cool effect. It can create a very uh, neat solar effect, like a distant star. Um, I've used it before when I've created like planets, um, like the edge of the sun is kind of peeking around the planet. It definitely gives some very cool results. Um, so we want to place this in the center of our flare. Obviously we need to change it to a nice orange color, as I've already done. Uh, because normally it comes in, let's see, a blue. Something like that. Which doesn't really work for this image. So we can put that in a nice orangish yellow. Uh, the radius, uh, I've already tried this, about 10 works for this image somewhere between 10 and 15, anything larger, and it doesn't look right. Um, the spokes, that is completely up to you, how many you like. I prefer to keep it between like 20 and 70. Um, the, those, the spokes are basically the light rays that come out of the center of this flare. So I'm going to leave it around 30, 40, something like that. Hit OK. And you can see it placed it there. And that definitely looks really cool. And we can set the blend mode on screen. <coughs> and we can see what it did to our flare. It made it kind of pop. Um, actually, let's do this. Let's place a black background underneath our flare. Merge that together. There we go. So now you can see the edges of that. That definitely looks really cool. And it gives it a little more of a realistic look. Um, 
we can go ahead and play with the uh, levels a bit just to make the uh, flare kind of pop right here. Uh, we can lower the midtones a bit and then increase the highlights like that. And now when you put them together, you can see that it really added a nice highlight to uh, that flare already. So you have little tiny rays coming from it, which just is more of a selling point than anything, but it looks pretty cool. Um, we can go ahead and merge that with our l other layer. Uh, a couple things we can do, we can duplicate this layer, go to filters, recently used, gosh and blur, and we can give this a large blur of, uh, let's try 400 by 400. That looks cool. Um, might want to um, increase the saturation a little bit, make it a little more orange. That looks good. And uh, we can take a really cool uh, grunge texture, um, such as these ones that I found on uh, Spoon Graphics. They're like little grit and grain. They're very, very cool. Um, I will have a description or a link for that in the description below. And uh, basically, we want to take one of these textures, find the one that we like. Like I am, I like this one a lot. Drag that on top of our image. <coughs> and it's a really big image, so we want to scale it down to about the size of our comp, like that. That looks really neat. Set the blend mode on dodge. You can go ahead and move it around if you want. Just find a cool place for it. This will give it the look of dirt or grain on your camera lens, which kind of adds an element of realism to it. And it's similar to the on-lens simulation of Video Copilot's optical flares. Merge that with, uh, let's see, Actually, we'll we'll actually merge it with our main flare layer, and then set the flare on something like screen or add. Add in this case is a little bit bright. We'll probably leave it on screen. We can turn on this other layer up here, set that on screen as well. Um, give us a brighter center or a brighter glow, just like that. But you can still see those elements like on the camera lens, which definitely helps sell the effect a little more. Um, so yeah, that is basically it. What if, though, you wanted to give it a cool blue streak across, like an anamorphic lens? What if we wanted to add it to this? Let me just increase that supernova a bit. If we have just a lens flare like this, just of a supernova, um, we can make it pop a little bit more. So this is just a glowing center um, for the flare, which looks cool. But if we want to add a neat vertical streak to it, we can make a new layer. We'll just leave it transparent. And we're going to choose a cool blue color. Uh, this is 0068 FF. And the guides are still there, so we can bring those up and we just want to draw a line going from one side to the other. So, just something like that. Now obviously this works with other colors too, depending on the color of your flare that you're going for. Blue is what most anamorphic lenses tend to uh, give off, so that's what we're going to use. And as with the other stuff, we just give it a blur along the horizontal edge and a small blur on the vertical something about 20 probably hit OK and it makes a nice long streak we can do the same thing but just get rid of the vertical blur depending on how long we want the streak to go set that on screen or on add uh, you can duplicate this layer set the bottom one on something like dodge and then just lower the opacity of it um, there's lots of different ways of achieving this. Uh, you can even try doing like we did earlier and scaling that flare down 
and then moving it up to where the flare should be like that. That looks cool. There we go. Um, but yeah, that is kind of how you do that. And then obviously you can make that any other color. You can make it red, green, yellow, pink, orange. What other, whatever uh, color flare you want to add into your scene, that is a great way to do it. Uh, so yeah, um, that is it for this tutorial. Please don't become J.J. Abrams and uh, use too many lens flares. But also don't be afraid to um, get a little bit chaotic with them because lens flares are not predictable. Um, people try and make them predictable, but lens flares are not. You can have all kinds of cool elements in there because it's hard to say exactly where a lens flare will be in a scene. Uh, most people will just take it that it, there is a lens flare in your scene. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your flares. You know, you can add elements in there that may or may not actually be there. It w won't matter because people will just accept that that is a lens flare. And it will look pretty cool, but definitely don't have lens flares leaking out of every corner of your image. Uh, so that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial a lot. And uh, you can be sure to follow me on, uh, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel or my Twitter, Blogspot, Facebook, or DeviantArt page. I'm on all of those. And uh, I'm going to try and keep those updated more regularly over this summer. And I hope you guys have a good day, and I will see you guys next time.